What is good, fam? Welcome to episode 18 of the Human Hope Podcast with your hosts. You hear that extra S at the end of hosts? Heather's here. Heather, babe, you're not very loud. Sorry. I feel like I need to like on the fly fix how loud you are. Okay. Uh, Heather is with me in the studios today. In Alaska. Where? Well, you just got loud there. We are in Alaska and um, babe, can you talk? Hello, one, two. You oh, you're a little louder now. Okay. okay. We're, we're in Alaska at our friends Adam and Sherry's house, and we're in their in their YouTube studio. It's so fun. We I don't know. have one of we these. Don't, we don't have one of these. We feel very fancy and official <laughs> here on the podcast uh, today, and we're grateful for them. You guys, follow them. They've got a great podcast, Leg Life uh, with two Gs. I'm sure you can find them on all the podcast places. Uh, so thanks for letting us use your podcast studio and your microphones and all the things. We're halfway through, we'll say halfway through, halfway through our Alaskan adventure. Dreams. And what we want to do in today's podcast is answer some of your questions. Heather reached out on her Instagram and asked her followers, uh, what are some questions you guys have about how we travel? And we, when I say how we travel, I'm, I don't mean like, you know, like what seat we like to sit in on the flight although we can tell you that we, we can tell, we definitely have opinions <laughs> on that but but you know a lot of the questions were yeah they were really interesting i mean you have your basic budget how do you travel with kids um you know th- those uh, those are the basic blah, blah, blah. can we start that over no this is all one take no i don't you, want a you, one you take don't, wonder you don't, you, don't, you don't have the opportunity this is just a conversation today. This is oh, you're not, such a no. Booger. I'm just saying, that, like, unless you want me to edit this thing all night. Long, okay, okay, we're going, we're going. So we're still going. Yeah. Okay, so back to everyone was asking about budgets, <laughs> about kids, <laughs> and then there was some fun random questions that we will get to. Yeah, but so, babe, I, off the cuff, I would love for you to think back. You traveled as a kid. Yeah. I what did. did that look like? Okay, this is great. I like this. I like where we're going here. Um, so when I traveled as a kid, it was always, almost always in the car. Yeah. Okay. So so rarely did we fly, but we did fly probably more than a lot of my friends flew because uh-huh. you know. Uh, but we would always every year we would drive from Atlanta where we lived to California because that's where our family is from. Kind of similar to like us, our, yeah. us, yeah. And uh, normal travel was um, my parents would go to. Triple A, which for those of you that don't know, this is like a that travel was the agency. Way. Was that like was the like thing. Google Maps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, we'll get there. And it was like before Google Maps, there was MapQuest. And if you guys are old enough to remember, you go to MapQuest.com, you'd put in where you wanted to go, and you could print them off of the internet, which was like what? <laughs> that was amazing. And I, I could go anywhere in the world. I could just print them on MapQuest. This was before smartphones, but before MapQuest, there was. The AAA trip ticks, right? Trip ticks. Yeah. They were called trip ticks. And they were the, I think they probably still make them. I'm sure they do. There's and some grandparents out there yeah, that want them. They were they're like these long, skinny, spiral bound things where it would show you like where the gas stations were, the mile markers, the next exit. The next yeah. exit. And you would flip it. And every every page of the trip tick was probably like 30 miles. And then you'd flip it. And, and the, I remember I would go with my mom. I was so excited because it meant that we were going on our trip. And the AAA person would like grab their yellow highlighter and highlight exactly where we wanted to go. The route. The route. Oh my gosh. It was actually so nice. (laughs) It was so nice because it was like. getting really. Well, no, because I like I'm feeling things right now because (laughs) because I remember like that meant we were going somewhere and somebody was actually, there was a a human being, like a tangible human being, like helping us on the way. There's just, we've lost some of that. Gosh, man. Anyway, I, this is a whole other podcast uh, I'm having. Yeah, wow. But but we would we would uh, and we'd always stay at Holiday Inns and uh, and we would always stay in Amarillo at the Holodome. And the reason why I love the Holodome is there was an indoor pool and indoor putt putt. Now some you of you guys call it fancy, Indian, but this was a fancy. I was like, my parents are spending money tonight at the Holodome, <laughs> and and everything else was Holiday Inn. But we would drive places, you know, and we would we'd be in the car. Uh, no seatbelts in the back, completely in the eighties. You know, like my, we, my parents would put like a, there was like this extra little thing in front of this bench seat that would, would create like a cot that my brother and I like had our own little bed back there. And I don't know, man, it just, it was good. Like memories yeah. were, 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 I have tons of great memories about traveling as a kid. So that's kind of how we did. And then when we would fly, um, my dad was a, a frequent flyer and we would always go into the 
Um, it was it was the Delta Crown Room is what wow. it was called. The Damn. Crown the Sick. Crown Room. I mean, they made you feel fancy, right? And so I always felt Kings so fancy. Kings and queens. Everything was leather. And I kind of wish there were still some crown rooms around. But now there's Sky Clubs. But anyway, that was kind of like my version of traveling. Nice. How about you? Yeah. So my family, I grew up in a divorced family. And so when I was with my dad, we did fly a handful of places um, growing up. I think we went to Denver, to Niagara Falls in New York and Boston. Those are some trips that I remember. Um, But my mom, we we did not. I literally cannot think of one time we were in a hotel room. Is that weird? Mm -hmm. That is really weird. But we would travel all the time um, because my my stepdad, my other dad is an adventure. So that looked like backpacking and hiking in the Sierra Nevadas. And we owned a boat. So we would take our boat camping and it was a lot of local exploration, but it was full on exploration. Yeah. 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 Well, and it was, you know, again, knowing that you, you probably grew up with less resources than, than me. But I feel like you adventured more. Yes, hundred percent. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and and again, adventure doesn't have to mean the outdoors. No. Um, but what what I do appreciate about both of our um, upbringing is that we went like we were always going mm-hmm. like like we went on trips. And again, your trips may have been local, mine may have been um, across the country. Across the country, but we would, we would just go, and we didn't let finances get in the way. Um, my parents didn't. Your parents didn't. Well, and, you know, I think that is probably one of the bigger questions that everyone kept asking is, how do you save any cost saving tips? You know, all those different types of questions. Like the budget. The budget side. Yeah. Which Um, if it was up to me, we we would have been broke a long time ago and not not able to go on any more trips because that's just not me. Well, it's not me either. No, it's not you either. But you're you, you I at least put the foot down. So sorry to all of you planners out there wanting a PDF that you can fill in because <laughs> if you go to our website, you can give <laughs> the us your email address do and not we'll give do you that. the Whitaker PDF on exactly <laughs> how it is. We no, we, we don't do that. I mean, there have probably been a handful of trips that we've gone on where we probably had a hundred bucks in our bank accounts. Yeah. Um, there are a handful of trips that we've literally gotten off planes going, where are we staying tonight? No, no. With all, I need you guys to understand this. With all three kids in tow <laughs> in another country. Yeah. And we're like, we don't know where, where we're going. <laughs> where are we going? Like, where are we, where are we staying tonight? But that actually brings us life. And we kind of yeah, love, no, we, we secretly love, love that. We, we love for that stuff. Um, so honestly, I would love to kind of, um, even answer that with the answer that we just gave you. Like we, we don't plan for our trips at all. We are lucky, very lucky in this season of life that Carlos travels for a living. So most often our trips are surrounded by his work schedule. So for example, we have not been to Alaska in, I mean, I've dreamt of going to Alaska for at least a decade and we haven't gone because he hasn't had work up here. And it just so happened that he got work up here that gave him two free tickets. And then we used miles for the other two and we paid for one ticket and they were super cheap. So, you know, it was under $400. We got to Alaska for basically for $400 to Alaska for under $400. So we waited. Yes, that's great. And, and, mm-hmm. and we were patient. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, right now there's tickets like Alaska's so cheap right now that I've seen some for like $200. And you just have to let me roll into you have to be flexible yeah. and be willing to watch for deals. So subscribe to the websites. And there's a handful out there. The one that we what are some of them? we liked was um, Scott's Cheap Flights. Now, I haven't used them. It, things kind of changed with the pandemic and stuff. I do not subscribe to any of these. Right. You, don't, you don't do like a paid subscription. No, I don't do it. Because nope. they'll try to upsell you. Yeah. Yeah. And you do. I think they do give you deals beforehand if that's something that's interesting to you but yeah. for me I don't um, but they do show us at times oh tickets to like for example we were coming home from a trip we were in the Atlanta airport and I did get an email from Scott Cheap's flight saying that there was a flight oh my gosh, to I remember this. South Africa for $500 on Delta which Carlos that is another tip is to pick one airline yes. so that you can get miles on them Yes, and so we instantly called i called delta specifically and they're like yep it's for five hundred dollars and then the round trip 
round trip. The most spectacular part of that is because Carlos travels so much, he gets free upgrades occasionally. So he he had a free international upgrade. We flew to South Africa yes, and back and back first class. Yes. For five hundred dollars. Lay down seats. Give it, me the, give me I the felt wine. so bougie. It, it was, was fantastic. It was bu- and I was looking around at everyone else that spent twenty thousand dollars on them first cut. Ca- First class lay down seats and not us. No. We, 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 but again, why? We were patient. Yep. We um, and also, jumped on it. And, and, like and it literally was it. like, oh, yes, we're, we need to do this. And here's the deal this, this was actually a few years ago, but even before we were making whatever money we're making now. Oh, we have traveled when we have been so butt poor. Yes, yes. So, hold on. I don't want to get there yet. Okay. Uh, like, that, that's a great point I want to sit on. But what I want to say is like, even back then, like, we did have a little bit of savings, like in a travel, but like, like, didn't we have some money like no. saved up for, no, we no. didn't. Okay. Don't try to paint the picture pretty. <laughs> Sorry. I, no, I, I we used like, our like grocery money to oh, okay. go and buy this ticket. Okay. <laughs> so you guys know who, who does our money. And <laughs> I felt like maybe we had a thousand dollars somewhere no. saved up. We had nothing. Okay. So Heather, Heather does text me and she's like, Hey, there's, there's flight yeah. South Africa. And, and, the, and the thing is you don't have to like buy the ticket, right? Like you don't have to, do you have to pick the date yeah. at that point? Yeah. So yeah, we were, we had to like make you a have, decision. You had, to, yes, you have to, you can't be a planner basically in some of these instances, yep. you have to say jump and be okay with it. Like, yeah. and so we did, we jumped and we got a spectacular trip out of it. And, and it, yeah. And, and when we did go down there, we, okay. So let's talk about now let's talk. Cause we actually, I, I feel like still we were Airbnb in it, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. So oftentimes, um, I think, you know, finding a cheap airplane ticket is doable. Like everyone can search wherever they want to go, yeah. be patient throughout the year. You know, there are seasons that are better, like Italy. Come around February, there are flights to Italy for like $200 because nobody wants to f- travel there then because they want to travel in the summer. Right. So, travel off season two. Yeah. And so just having that flexibility. So, with that said, um, another travel budgeting tip that I have is, okay, so you want to travel, be flexible in your timing. I would say to pick an airline. Like if you yes. if you live in Atlanta airport, you're going to fly Delta because Delta just <clears throat> is the main airport. But again, if you live in Dallas, Texas area, you're going to have American. If you're, you know, and so you or pick- Or Southwest. Or Southwest, yeah. So uh, you pick your airline. Then- Get whatever credit card that gets you miles yeah. to them. Okay, pay it off every month. Don't get go in debt. Yes, we're 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 not financial advisors here, but definitely pay off your credit cards. Yes, <laughs> but you can make you can make miles that then, like I said, we got two free tickets to Alaska for our kids because we used the miles that we use. Yeah. So not only are you gaining miles by flying the specific airline, but then. Most airlines have a specific credit card that kind of you get double yep. points for. And so those are two things that really do allow you to kind of bank um, and, free and, money. And, and also know that know that it it is going to be a sacrifice to choose one airline. Like just know that, especially if you like I travel all the time, almost every week, or at least I used to before the pandemic. And and I'm I just know that I'm going to fly through Atlanta. Like I You're if not, I want to yeah, stay on Delta, mm-hmm. I'm going to have a layover. And a lot of people are like, why, why did you fly to Atlanta to fly to Minnesota? It's like, well, I've, I'm, I've chosen Delta and to I'm locked in. To get a free ticket to Alaska yeah, for your to, kids. And so <laughs> guess what? I fly to Atlanta to get to wherever the next place is so that when it com- comes time to book a trip, we've got, we always do. We always have miles, mm-hmm. you know? And so, um, you know, some people may Southwest, you know, we have a lot of friends that love Lots Southwest of people that love Southwest. Um, and, and again, there's benefits to Southwest. They've got this companion pass thing. Yeah. That's you, you, awesome. You stick along with that. That means that one person is going to be able to fly yeah. with the other person for free the rest of the year. Now here's the deal. That's not really beneficial for us with our family structure and the way that we travel. So although Southwest is good for some people, Delta is better for us right. because we, uh, we're, we're all about, oh, and I just travel so much and, and we're just all about the perks. He likes, that comes. He likes those upgrades. I like the, the upgrades and I like the Sky Club or the, I'm going to start the call the crown, crown, <laughs> crown room. room. I like the crown room and, uh, yeah, you know, so choose that airline. Um, so, you know, find those websites where you, they'll, they'll email you the deals and, you know, you found things on Expedia before, like oh, you can, for sure. you know, like don't, don't just think it's, it's the secret is Scott's cheap flights. Like, no, like 
Um, just, just remember no, that I you can do Google it. I think Google flights, actually. I usually jump off of like, I'll see a sale and then I'll go to Google now, flights. Now, where will you, you say I see a sale. Where will you see a sale? Through emails or even like on Instagram or just on the internet. Yeah. They know I travel. So they'll yeah. send things and then I'll be like, oh, you know, Paris is only two. Again, we went to Paris last February, right before the pandemic for 200 and something dollars. I bought tickets. I'm like, I can before the pandemic. pandemic. Yeah. It was before the pandemic before. Yeah. I bought them in like December. So before even Corona was even a word in our vocabulary. And, um, I was like, so you're telling me, I looked it up at the day I could fly (laughs) to Paris for 200 and something dollars, yeah. but to go home for Christmas, it's going to be 300 plus dollars. Right, right. So, you know, it's just one of those things. You just, you, 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 you have to make a decision. Okay. But let's, let's talk about how there are a lot of people that can't afford an airplane ticket. Sure. Aren't going to have credit card points. Yep. That's fine. Yep. Because we lived for a decade plus not traveling by air. Yeah. And we would literally go, oh, what's a small town? Yes. 30 minutes away that we would drive to go to a restaurant Experience even sometimes it. we couldn't afford a full meal at a restaurant like everyone mm-hmm. couldn't afford so we would go in and get like french fries and a soda Babe, like i feel like we did that this week in alaska well <laughs> <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like you're acting like this was like a decade ago but were we not just in homer and you're like, nope, hundred percent. we're getting one basket of fries. You're getting a clam chowder, three spoons. And I mean, we still do this that, because, OK, so here's another tip. <clears throat> Food is so stinking expensive. Like Carlos and I went to breakfast today, just him and I, nothing fancy. And it was forty eight dollars. Yeah. What the heck? Like and then my tummy hurt at the end of it. <laughs> Think about how many boxes of cereal or how many boxes of oatmeal you can feed I literally went to Costco and spent a certain amount of money for the entire week for a family of eight this whole week. This is crazy. And it cost the same amount as our one dinner did last night. Last night. We went to dinner last night. The just same at the, price. Just at the like the hotel restaurant. Yes, at, just at the hotel restaurant because it was our last night. So we we're kind of out of food. We didn't have a place to cook. So we went to the hotel restaurant. Yep. It cost the same amount as it did going to the grocery store in Costco that fed the rest of our week. Hold on. But Heather, I'm going to play devil's advocate mm-hmm. or, or I'm going to play somebody that's listening to this going like, but, but we're staying in hotels. We don't have kitchens to cook all this. Like you go to Costco and you buy food that you know, I, I can't cook everything. So of course we're going to have to budget to eat out every single time. Well, there are things called an ice chest. Yep. So you can make oatmeal. You can have cereal. We literally you had can buy overnight oats. Overnight day. oats. You can have granola bars. You can have muffins. There's your breakfast. You, lunch. lunch. You can have Hawaiian sandwiches. Bread rolls. Hawaiian bread rolls. You can have. We were eating Hawaiian bread rolls at, out of the back of the truck. In with a bag Seward, of chips. With a bag cherries. of chips. And cherries. And everyone was just yeah. kind of scarfing down. And I'm sitting here going like. If we would have gone to lunch, it uh-huh. would have cost 140 bucks for all of us to eat. If not more. Yeah. And there was eight of us on the trip. Yeah. So I really like that is number one, huge, huge cost. And people are going to put your family is going to push back against you because they want to go to a restaurant. And uh, that's why when we were in Homer and it, everyone wanted fish and chips, I'm like, let's go. Let's all go have a bite. <laughs> Remember when we go to Disneyland and we would go to Disneyland because it would cost like $100 for the whole year for our whole family. Yeah. So like we would go. We didn't have money to buy anything at Disneyland and we would get one caramel apple. Yep which was probably $6, yep. cut it up, chew it, share yep. it. And literally our kids, when we went to Disneyland in Paris, they didn't have caramel apples and our kids did not know what to do. They're like, no. but that's our tradition, yeah, you know? Their minds. And, and our kids didn't even, they would never even understand what it would be like to hold their own caramel right. apple on a stick. <laughs> like if we were to try to give it, they'd look at us like, why what are you, you giving me that entire <laughs> thing? Like, like I'm fine. Just give me a slice, yeah. you know? And you just, you just get used to it. And and it takes more. It does take more work. But I'm telling you, you're going to save money when you do it this way. Okay, here's another question for you. What I want you to see. I want to see if you remember this. What oh, was our kids first trip? Wait, what do you mean? Like, like each of them? Uh huh. Losai's first trip was to America. <laughs> OK, that's an easy one. You get that one. Sweet. I got that one down. Um, so when you say trip, what do you mean trip? Like trip, not to Fresno. Not, Not like, like to Disneyland? No. 
I feel like. Although we did go to Disneyland with Sohela two weeks. Yeah, two two weeks. I feel like Sohela's. Okay, it's going to be one of these two. Okay. I can't remember. It was either to my friend Slade's wedding in Atlanta no. or to Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. How old was she? Uh, okay, I can tell you this. She had to have been less less than three months old. Yes, yeah, she was six weeks. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Six okay, weeks. so here's the thing. We went to Hawaii. Wait, wait, wait. Sayana. Uh, oh, jeez. Sayana? Uh-huh. <sighs> Sayana. I'm going to... Well, I'm pretty proud of myself. For I'm this, proud of you, too. So Hala thing. Sayana. Sayana's our middle child, our 17-year-old now. I'm going to say her first trip... New York? Yeah. Come on! Let's go! How old was she? She had a, You were breastfeeding, so she had to have been... Six weeks. Six weeks at the same... Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is amazing. Isn't that crazy? So, when people ask, when did you start traveling with their kids? Literally, yeah. when they were born. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when they're born... I mean... Listen, if you wait, if you wait until everything, until they're old enough to not throw a fit or they're old enough, oh, you're you know never the going to of travel. Tantrums we had and screaming car rides and but oh, it was worth it. Yeah. But but whooping their butts. No. no, I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. But um, yeah, I mean, really, that there's something else like like don't wait. Like don't wait. And it's like I, I do hear so many people that are like. Well, you know, we've got three toddlers. Yeah, guess what? You're going to be exhausted, and and you may not on the trip. You you may you may think to yourself, "We're crazy. This is exhausting." There are going to be moments on that trip where you're going to be like, "This was worth it." And then let me tell you this: when you look back, yeah, when you look back, the memories always outweigh whatever pain yeah. was happening in the moment. And you know, I look back at, at trips when like, oh, let me let's just imagine like I'm remembering Hawaii. Okay, Hawaii. Here, listen to this. We go to Hawaii with Sohela. We, I look back at pictures, and I look, both of us, our beat. eyes are just beat. Down. I mean, we're beat like beat up. <laughs> and then at the very end, she gets sick. We, she has a fever. We she, don't get on the. Plane. We don't get on the plane. We have to go to the hospital. She has to get a catheter, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And and she's screaming. I'm like so stressed out. She has hand, foot, mouth. Um, but they didn't identify it because she was such. A, she was a newborn. She was a newborn. They're like, how did she get? You normally get that in like a daycare. And so we're like exhausted. But then I still look back at those pictures and I think, how cool was that? Yeah. You know, like yeah. it just was, it was awesome. Well, and I think the thing is, is you have to set your standards low. You're not going for a romantic honeymoon Hawaii trip when you have a newborn or toddlers with you. It's just not going to happen. Right. But if you have crazy kids running around our house, having tantrums, I would prefer yeah. crazy kids running around the rental house, Let's having go. tantrums in a different location. Yeah. That's and, just me. And again, not thinking about, I think where a lot of people go wrong, Heather, is people are like, they just think, oh, we spent $3,000 and our kids are miserable here, you know, and our kids are crying and their kids are screaming. No, like you, you spent $3,000 and like, you're going to have these memories. memories. Yeah. I'm just telling you, it's so important. I think, you know, our kids did grow up traveling. And again, like I said, it was not travel the world like we do now, but they traveled to their grandparents at least once a month, which was four hours away. They traveled um, camping. We would go camping yep. all the time. And when Carlos would have a day off on Saturdays, we lived in Southern California. would be like, well, what town do you want to go visit? And we'd go to Long Beach or we'd go to Huntington or we'd yeah. go to the beach or the mountains or the desert. Like we just would always make sure that we were exploring different i think the beauty of it is you're exploring different cultures even if it's 30 minutes outside of where you live it's a different type of environment and we love that we love exploring food we love you know somebody had asked how do you get your kids to eat in different cultures and well for me food has been my battle like i will yeah they had to learn to eat all things in our house and so that was never a problem for us but um, I mean, if it is a problem, then you go to the store and you buy the things that they eat. Like, yeah. it's just, you know, it is what it is. But, um, okay, let's talk. So, what? so anything else about kids? Well, I yeah, think- no, here's something else. And okay. you, you may want to get, you may have this in your, Heather actually has show notes. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen this before so on organized. any of my podcasts. I don't, I don't have show notes. Um, I kind of like this. Can you produce all no. my episodes? Okay. So you may talk about this later, but talk about for a second sacrificing some things in your lifestyle mm-hmm. when you're not, and I don't know if you have these in your show notes, but sacrificing things in your everyday in order to be able to travel. Now, 
that can split off into two directions. One could either be, uh, uh, what's the standard of living? Yep. The, you know, the fact that gotcha. you, you may not be able to keep up with the Joneses, <laughs> but guess what? The Joneses are stuck and, <laughs> and you're not, and you're going other places. And then two, sacrificing even what you're not, yeah. not what you're spending money on, but, but what you're choosing to spend your time doing. Yeah. So again, I want everyone to hear this. We're not saying that this is the right way. We're just this saying is, that, that this is the way we have been able to travel so much. Our kids weren't in any, in any organized sports. sports. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they don't have, our kids don't have memories with the T-ball and right. the team and all those things. And guess or what? even school. Or school, that's right. We homeschooled them. Yeah. Right? right. So we homeschooled them in order to be able to go places. They weren't in those summertime leagues. And mm-hmm. and um, we had we had moments. I remember yeah. with one child crying, just wanting to go to school. And I said, baby, I am so excited for you to grow up and have your own home that you get to choose how it functions. But our home, daddy and my home we're choosing to live a different lifestyle than everyone else. Now she looks back now and is like, Oh my gosh, thank you for not having me be come just a normal person. Like she is so thankful for that. But in a moment it is hard. You do have a little, you have to get over the, the mom guilt because Mm. you, you know, deep down that this is who you are and what your family is about. So for Mm. us, it just was worth the hours of being together and traveling over yeah. the yeah. other experiences yeah. that over, they could have had, which are which great. Are fine. And, and we, we have a lot of friends who their lives look completely different and yeah. their kids are healthy Absolutely. and their, their kids are well adjusted. It's just a different it's just way different. of life. And so, you know, some, for some of you guys, I would say maybe, maybe you've, you've wondered like, is, is there another way than just kind of suburban soccer mom or just kind of, the, yeah, there actually is there. There's, and it's not a better way. It's a different way, and it, it is right for some people. Yeah. You guys, um, you know I'm a big believer in therapy. I'm a huge believer in therapy. I, I, I've been to more therapy than most people that I know combined, right? And I, I want to tell you about a sponsor that we have on this week's episode. Um, and the sponsor is Better Help. That's H-E-L-P. And what BetterHelp does is offer affordable counseling online. One of the the biggest things I get from people is, hey, Carlos, I can't afford therapy. I can't afford counseling. But I'm here to tell you that therapy is financially available and accessible to all you guys. Let me tell you for just a second what BetterHelp does. What BetterHelp does is they assess your needs and they actually match you with your own licensed professional therapist, not just a counselor. These are professional therapists. You get to connect in a safe and private environment. And what I love about it is you can literally start communicating in under 48 hours with your own private therapist. It's an incredible opportunity. It's an incredible platform that they've built for people like us that maybe don't want to show up in a therapist's office and bump into somebody that we know. Now, one thing that it's not is it's not a a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is actually professional counseling done securely online. Okay, you can send a message to your counselor anytime. You'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room, right? That's what we don't want. So what I love about BetterHelp is they're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so that they make it easy and free to change counselors if you need. So if, if like you're with one counselor and it's not vibing, guess what? You can find another one. And it's way more affordable than traditional offline counseling. And also financial aid is actually available. It doesn't matter where you live. You can live anywhere on the planet. I've got a lot of people that live all over the world that listen to this podcast. It is for you. So. This is what you guys need to know. Whether it's depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, grief, LGBTQ things, self-esteem, anything you share is confidential. It's convenient, but most of all, it's affordable. So, so what I want you guys to do, I want you to head over to my special set up by BetterHelp website and it's betterhelp, that's H-E-L-P dot com slash human hope. Again, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, 
dot com slash human hope. And as a listener, you guys will get 10% off of your first month while you actually join over 1 million people who've taken charge of their mental health. Again, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash human hope. Now back to the show. I think, um, so the lifestyle choices like that is huge. Also, you know, we just now, how many years have we been married? 21 years. Oh, yeah. Bought our first car that we chose. That we... That was not a hand-me-down. That was not a, yep. oh, well, this is how much we have. This is what we want. Like, it is the first car in 21 years that we were like, oh, this is, well, not me. I don't want this car. It's gigantic <laughs> and too big. But that Carlos was like, this is what I want. And so for 21 us, 21 years, our last van that we literally turned in had mold in it. Mold. It would. You had Le- to wear gas masks it to leak- drive it. <laughs> it leaked when when <laughs> it rained. You had to jump it every time you started it. Every single time. And that was Carlos's car for the last five years. Yep. And it was that way for the last two years. And that is the type of sacrifices that we were willing to take. Yep. I go fly fishing and I have a little like blow up pontoon boat. <laughs> I, would, I would put that pontoon, not pontoon boat, the raft. I would blow it up and I would put it on top of my minivan and I would drive to the river. And guess what? <laughs> When I go to the river, the river was filled with F-150s, Dodge Rams, all these people in their trailers putting their boats in. And I would back up that minivan, <laughs> proud as could be. And I w- and every- all the other fishermen would see me. And I would put- and guess what? You still went fly fishing. I still went fly fishing. Yeah. And and I didn't lose a memory on that. Yeah. And and we did we just didn't have car payments, you know? Yeah. Like we weren't um So there are sacrifices and and those are the things that we choose. Yeah. You know, everyone has the same hours in the day, every dollar per you know, yeah. is the same value to each person. So you just have to choose what your family or you as a person yeah. want to make of those. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so good. You know, it's, uh, um, I just keep thinking the word sacrifice, sacrifice. If you want to travel, you're going to have to sacrifice something. Don't know what it is, but. Okay. Let's talk. Um, what is the best place you've taken? We've taken our kids. Oh man. There's been a lot. Um, well, let's talk about the places we've taken our kids. Okay. Okay. So we've taken them to London. We've taken them to Africa. Africa. We've well, a we, bunch of places in Africa. Don't want to just say Africa. We've taken them to Kenya. Yes. We've taken them to Uganda. Uganda. We've taken um, them to um, Paris. France? No, we haven't said that. Paris and the Swiss Alps yep. and Germany. Germany. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hawaii. All over the states. Yeah. Almost um, every state they've been to. Yeah. Um, where else would we take them? Uh, uh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Um, Is we that... didn't take them to India. No, Canada. No. Yeah. Canada. Oh, Canada. The Canada counts. Uh, I think okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we, we've taken them around. My favorite place that we've ever taken our kids, um, with them, like for them, I mean, it has to be, oh, well, it's either Kenya or Uganda. Yeah. It, and but, they would say that too. Hands yeah. down. Every single person is Africa uh, and tied between those places. Um, But honestly, I'm going to tell you something else that I love traveling where I love to travel with the teens is a walkable city. So New York City literally is one of our favorite places to travel to because with teens, with teens, because you can't be on your phone. Yep, You literally have to ha- put your phone down or you'll other, right? yeah, you'll get hit by a bus. And so it creates this unity as you're walking around the city that yeah. is just different than any other places that we've traveled. Yeah, no, that's, it's so good. And I remember when we, when we realized yeah, that, when we realized that we, we realized that maybe two, two or three years ago in New York. Yeah. And like they, the kids just weren't on their phones. And we were always looking. And we actually do have phone rules, but yeah, yeah, but but still, you know, still, when, when you're in a car, yeah, driving for three, three hours, hours. there you people are just on their devices. When you're walking around for three mm-hmm. hours, nobody's on their devices. It that's was true. really fun. No, so, was, and I think there's lots of different walkable cities, but um, that's just you know a thought. Yeah. When you have teens. Yeah. Um. And 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 also think think too like if you're listening to this and you're in the states, there are such. There's a such rich culture even the here States in America. Are incredible. I mean, just just gosh. the the culture in you know Amish country. Oh when my we, gosh. We travel. You know, We're we going there we next live. Week. I'm so pumped. Yeah, we live in Nashville, Tennessee, 
And one of our favorite things to do when people come visit us isn't to go down Broadway, isn't to mm-hmm. go down Honky Tonkin, is to take people to this tiny town called Etheridge, a mm-hmm. community called Etheridge. Um, that is an Amish community about an hour, a little over an hour outside yeah. of Nashville. And it is like going back in it's time. so much fun. And we love it. And, and free. And we used to do it with the kids all the time. Yeah. And what? so what were some of the fun things that the kids love to do? When we would go to Amish country to Etheridge. I mean, like, again, they it's that, that they, they, they want to go get their peanut brittle. Yes. And they want to get their Amish peanut butter They to know eat. every time. That. Like, that's just, you know, and then and then we just go and take pictures. Well, not of the Amish. We don't right. need those emails. But, like, we just would have fun. And it was things like stopping at, like, there's so many cultural things within your city um, markers, the Capitol or stopping at this park and seeing why, you know, what civil war was yeah. fought there and, you know, doing all the free festivals that come to town. Like your experiencing of travel doesn't have to be flying to Africa. Right. It could be anywhere. And yeah. so that is just something as a kid, as a dating couple, as an old retired couple, like be inspired and go explore what's around you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the every time I and I've just been doing this recently, but um, you know, I went on a trip to uh I was like St. Simon's Island. And there's all the things you can do, but there's always more history you can unearth. Right. Um, and so, you know, with your kids, like try to find some history that nobody's really talking about. Try to find some history um, and and go there and see it and talk about it. And it's just there's just so much here in the States that's drivable um, and, and camp. Like, don't be you know, I, this is something else that I want to tell people. Don't be scared to sleep outside. Oh, it's the like, best. It, it's our it, favorite it, by and, far. And we've got a kid that's not a big, not fond of <laughs> camping. And there's, there, there's always going to be people that aren't fond of it. But if you're like, well, I mean, I don't know, like try, I'm just telling you, try it, you know, like, except like, except for maybe not in the South, in the, in the middle of the summer. Some, cause... some people love that. I mean, actually I just saw our next door neighbors were like glamping in the Smokies this week. Oh, and I was like, oh my gosh, like it's like gracious. 80 degrees and hundred percent. We're, we're camping snobs. Though. We are, we are camping snobs, but, but listen, like we're all about camping, backpacking. Um, and it, and it is, it's cheaper, you know, like, like you get a, a $15 camping, um, uh, pass, you know, last summer we went to, maybe it was two summers ago. Now we, we went Heather, Heather drags me backpacking more than I drag her backpacking, <laughs> but we went on some trail in Colorado. And I just remember it was like the most epic, gorgeous. It you, was so beautiful. If there was a, if there was a Airbnb on this little lookout over this river, it would have cost, I don't know, 1200 bucks a night, but we were just with our tent, you know? And so, and again, um, there's just different ways that you can travel. So. Yeah. So a couple of random questions that I loved um, were, dun, 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 do you check bags? Wait, what was that noise that you just made? I don't know. It was kind of <laughs> like a mystery, but this isn't well, really mysterious. So. I know, but you, you, I just want to know because you make that sound a lot. Like, like in conversation with the family, like you'll go oh. dun, dun, dun. So what is, what is it's that? It's like sound? a build up. Okay. So yeah. So dun, dun, dun. It, is, do you is, check it, bags? <laughs> Not really a build up question. No. Yeah, but is is it like a song that you know? Like is there a history behind that? Like is and everyone it... does it. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Dun, dun. Okay, cool. No, there's no there's no did it? No. Dun, dun, dun. So this yeah. is it's more like a thriller. Like Ooh, a okay, I'm so, scared of this. Okay, so here I go. Dun dun dun. Do you check going. bags? You... Oh. <laughs> that was the dun dun dun? Yeah, I misplaced it and then you really Oh sorry. Built well, it up. well, first of all, I <laughs> I've never asked you that question. We've been married 21 years and the dun, 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 I'm like, this is the perfect moment. Cause I, it just hit me. Like, what is that? Why do you do that all the time? Oh, now I know it's to build up, but then you've, uh, you've used it inappropriately <laughs> in this moment. So do we check bags? The question is yes, but only when I travel. Yes. Why is that? Heather? Cause you get them for free. Actually, I just got a credit card first time in 21 years. And so I get bags for free too. You do. How many bags do you get for free? Two. You do? Just yeah. Like, I get more than two. I'm a diamond on Delta, mm, which fancy. means I fly 150,000 miles a year, which is crazy. And and I get free bags. So, <laughs> so yes, we, here, great example. We had different tickets booked to fly to Alaska because I um, had an event had, before. had an event the day before. And so Heather and the kids flew to Alaska. I flew the next day. You guys didn't check bags. No, everyone had to pack in a carry-on. I mean, I checked two. You did check too, but everyone uh-huh. else had carry-ons. Everyone and you had a carry-on. I did not. Oh, you didn't? Okay. And then she sent me 
with a some bag. bags, mm-hmm. two bags mm-hmm. to check from my event. So that we just work it like that. We yeah. just do things, you know. And then and so, here's can I give another fun tip? Well, hold on. Oh, okay. When we check bags, I feel like sometimes with Delta, I'll show up and they'll let us check all the bags yes. for free. Yes, they will. They're with, like, thank you for plus, being diamond. Yes, yes. Um, my tip is when I go someplace, say I'm not checking a bag, I will bring like a roll up bag. That if I know I'm going to get souvenirs or things, um, I will yes. I will bring a roll up bag, put it in, so I'm not paying for a bag on the way there. When you say a roll up bag, you mean just like a like a like a flat duffel bag that's yeah. canvas, canvas, and yeah, that takes no room in your bag. Um, you can get one of these on Amazon. I actually got one, a black one, that black one yeah. that we use a lot. No, it's I feel great. like it was 10 bucks. Yeah, it's great. And then you throw that in your bag and then on the way home, if you get enough goodies, because I'm a treasure hunter, then you pay the one way, you know. Yeah, you pay the 50 bucks or whatever. Or I, don't, I, don't, I think actually, it's 30 or 40. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. but but you're saving a little bit there. Yep, you're saving a little bit of money. And, and again, that's why some people, a lot of people <clears> like fly Southwest is because yeah. Your bags fly yeah. free. Yep. And on Delta, they definitely don't fly free. So, um, yeah. What good tip. are some Are you must- asking me a question? I am. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. What are some must-haves when you pack? Mm. Oh, that's, oh, now we're getting to the Oh, wait. Part. Let's get to a better part. What are my must-haves? I have two that I always have. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. One is your pillow. Yes, and amen. Yep. I'm telling you, this woman brings her straight up bed pillow. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like a specific pillow. Like I'm not tied to one pillow, but I need my own pillow for my home. There's something about snuggling up my face in a pillow where somebody else was the night before. I, I mean, just can't do it. I, I, she literally drags her pillow around. Mm-hmm. I mean, this morning at 6.30 a.m., I was like, babe, why is your pillow on the parking lot wet floor? I'd rather this- have the parking lot wet floor than... Yeah. So yeah, a face. pillow. What's the other thing? You know, what? I've never thought about someone else's face being <laughs> smushed against You're the welcome. object that my face is smushed against. That's really gross. Mm-hmm. Whoa, I've never thought about that. That's gonna mess with me. Okay, actually, it won't mess with me. No. The other thing is a fan. No, but when I do travel to Africa, I do yeah, have a you fan. Always bring for a fan. Sure. Okay, stop then. A pillow. It's it's more food. I I always need to have these to eat. Granola bars. Oh. Wait, stop, stop. I feel like we've, we've been married 21 years. And you bring these on every trip to eat? Um, probably in the last five years. And it's not granola bars? No, granola or, bars. Or I not don't granola, eat granola, not granola bars. But RX bars or whatever those no, other things are? No, lager bars is what I eat. But no, yeah. almonds. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess. It's true. I guess I, guess I don't like pay attention to those because they're disgusting. Because you don't eat them, yeah. You know what else I have? <clears throat> I have this. My mother in law bought this for me for Christmas. It's a sling. Like you put it on oh, the for I'm, long flights because I'm so short. I'm the one person that doesn't want your the feet exit don't touch the floor. Roar. No, I don't want the exit row because my feet don't touch the floor. And so you hook this little contraption over the tray yeah. and then it gives you like a little hammock. It's so great. And you use it all the time. I take it every trip. Yeah. Every trip. Uh, what do I pack every single time? Everything. <laughs> Too much. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously like, I'm, I'm always videoing everything. Yeah. And so I'm, I always have all this gear, like all my gadget things. Uh, fly what, fishing pole yeah, often. Yeah. I, I do try to take my, I, I like that. I try to take my fly fishing pole everywhere because there's always a body of water to fish. It doesn't matter where you're at. Uh, and I like to do that on, you know, when I have a day off or an afternoon off. Um, but you know, we, what, we try to pack like some kind of oils or stomach stuff. Like when we travel, yeah. just because you know yeah. Yeah. things can get funky out there. Yeah, no, no, that that's that's for sure. I mean, I always have I always have the day cools and night cools in case somebody gets something. But you know, something that I, I mean, this is something that a lot of people don't know. You know, we all have Bluetooth headphones, and this is, again, if you don't travel a lot, you don't know this. When you go on a plane, uh, you if you don't have your own headphones that you can like old school headphones, right? Old school I, before the lightning bolt adapters, you actually have to you can't listen to the TV unless you use their little crappy headphones, but there's a little adapter on YouTube, on YouTube, on Amazon that you can buy that's Bluetooth that you plug in and then it attaches to your Bluetooth headphones. So you can still use your Bluetooth headphones. I used to use that all the time, but my son has stolen it to use it on his, one of his consoles at home. So that's something else that I, that's fun that I use. Yeah. I'm trying yeah to it's a, a little trick. Yeah. Um, what else? <clears throat> I love, um, so because we have flown first class across the 
see, they always give little like baggies. And so when we do a long flight, I love to pack a little baggie for my family. I usually put a little mm. note in it, some snacks, some wipies, um, and just like just some little travel side fun things. Yeah. No, just that, fun. Yeah. Just yeah. little details. We like that a lot. I mean, even on this trip, it was last night. We're all getting ready to leave. Everyone's getting ready to leave. Heather's like, hey, guys, I bought a magazine for every single one of you to read on the way home. And it was personal. Mm-hmm. And it was like you thought about it. And again, just those little things yeah. make the experience so much better. And honestly, I'm I don't I'm there's not a, an ounce of that in my body. And so Heather is really <laughs> good. Uh, at doing all that stuff. I don't do any Thanks of that stuff. Thanks for always going on these adventures with us. No, I know. I do. I mean, I'm literally looking Staring. out of my window and there is a massive mountain that has exploded from the sea. Um, and we're in, we're in Alaska. We're in Anchorage. I have one last question. Okay. So our family is evolving in the oh, sense yeah. of that they're getting teen, teens and whatnot. Friends we evolving. have more schedules to yeah. have to work around. Yeah. Um, and we have the boyfriends. Yeah. Um, we did not allow really friends to come. Like we didn't invite friends to go on trips <clears throat> um, prior to right. these boyfriends actually. Right. No, we no. don't. I, there, there, we never had friends. We never took friends. I mean, if we drive somewhere maybe, but. That's yeah. It. So what is the deciding factor to let the boys come? Um, well, I feel like we have different answers. Okay. Um, I mean, listen, well, this isn't a parenting podcast episode, but I mean, I, uh, my daughters didn't date. They didn't date in high school until the last year. And one daughter decided to, to start dating the year after high school, uh, her freshman year of college. And then the other one is a junior in high school. And, um, and now they're both decided to date at the same time. And so I, I mean, I had a lot of catching up to do as far as like a, dad of dating daughters where my, my whole thing at the beginning was just like, like, we just got to make sure that they're dating correctly. And then I feel like Heather rapidly (laughs) for me, we can talk about this publicly (laughs) was a big old fight. It went from like, Oh yeah. They're just starting to date to homeboys coming to Lake Tahoe with us (laughs) and both of them. And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa. And so yeah, we we had um, we had long conversations, uh, difference of opinions on whether or not <laughs> to include these boys on our trips. And I will tell you this: um, this is not this can't be a blanket. It uh, is approach. not a blanket. Approach it has to be a very all. individual approach. Mm-hmm. But um, our daughters happen to be dating two incredible guys right now. They may not. As as of this moment, they're incredible guys. I don't know what's going to happen later, but as of right now, I'm like, you know what? These are good guys. I would rather invest into them and their relationship around me and Heather than cross my fingers that they're figuring it out on their own. And so that's another reason why I have enjoyed these boyfriends coming on two trips because we we kind of don't play around. We ask hard questions. We parent the boyfriends mm-hmm. very much. We parent the boyfriends. We, um, I mean, you know, we're, they have their own parents to parent them in other ways. But you're dating my daughter. I'm going to parent you in dating my daughter. And it it also allows me to have a very close up view of who they are mm-hmm. um, from Jump Street. So again, I don't think this would. I think that if. This is a personal family choice. This is personal not family a choice. But on that first trip to Tahoe, when we all went, if uh, anything was glaringly obvious that I w- we weren't down with, I think that would have been an accelerant in um, in in our helping either divert that relationship or uh, or fix whatever it is yeah. that that we were trying to see. And so there's something about being as a dad in close proximity to guys that are in love with your daughters. Um, that they know that they, they respect me. I respect them and I actually enjoy them. I, I love hanging out with them. They're fun. Um, and it was, a, it was a work in progress for me. If my daughters end up dating somebody else, if my son dates somebody that, uh, is not vibing with our family and the way we flow, I don't know if it would work. I agree. I, I think that it works because we have enjoyed them. Like we actually like hanging out with them. Yeah. Um, Okay, so post I mean, that was a long answer. Post trip, before the trip, you were like, eh, "Don't want to do it." Trip. The first trip to Tahoe. Sec after you said, 
know. Just that you you were glad. Oh, I was glad. Yeah, yeah. I, I was. I was glad because again, I I got to see him. Yeah. With my daughter, like you can't hide anything in a townhouse in Tahoe. You're all sharing. You're all sharing everything. Yeah. We had the rules like no, no one blanket. You got to have two blankets. Yeah. On the sofa. I mean, there were all these fun rules, you know. Um, and and again, you know, like the, I I was I I, I was glad. I now, do this trip. Uh-huh. They came, yeah. but we they. They had to pay for it. We did not pay for them to come on the trip. We, we paid said, for the last one. Yes, because it was part of their Chris, our kids' Christmas gift. Our kids' gift. Christmas gift, yeah. Um, this one was, yeah, you guys can come, but you have to pay. Yeah, yeah. And so and they so did. They, they, they did. And and here's here's also the thing. Like, there are moments, to be completely honest, that I miss it just being the five of us. Sure. Like, they're, because again- We had they, a weekend they're, they're the not, other day with just the five of us. Yep, it was yep, so fun. Yeah. And, and like, again, there's no marriage licenses here. Nobody's married. Like, so like- we don't have to make the, have these boys right. go, you know? And so there are, where did we go the other weekend that it was just us? Monroe. Yeah. We, yeah. Monroe. We went to West Monroe, Louisiana. Um, and it was just the five of us in the small town in Louisiana. And I enjoyed it. Like it was fun. Yeah. And, and I, and I think to myself, I want to do more of these. Like, I want to make sure that we're still maintaining some semblance of the five of us sure. while there's, you know, boys involved in, in other instances of it. So that's a long way that you just literally heard me process things that I haven't processed out loud before, but congratulations. Welcome to the human hope podcast. There's hope for you dads up out there that are worried to death about your daughter's dating. Okay. Do it, do it right. At, when they're young and they'll pick good guys. Maybe, maybe not actually <laughs> I feel like my parents did a lot right. And I still, what, what Wait, you're saying me? you didn't pick right. Huh? You no, just... I'm, I'm no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying if you parent them right when they're little, they'll oh. pick good guys, but that's actually not true. They have their own brains and they can make stupid decisions and pick wrong, you know, pick mm-hmm. wrong. I know a lot of friends that parent. This is not a parenting. Right? This is travel. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm going down. I'm going okay. Down. So Alaska, Maybe. last thing we're, all, we're done signing out from Alaska. I think, um, you know, it, Alaska can be pricey, but it can also be cheap. I think Alaska is fantastic phenomenal mountains, phenomenal things to do. You know, our bear excursion was probably the, second most exciting thing that we've ever done. Our safari was first. The bear was probably second. Um, It it cost lots of money. Um, We made our kids, we made the two that went pay for three fourths of it. Um, But they did and they loved it. And, um, you know, you just do things. I think, you know, if my kids were younger, I don't know if I would do Alaska. If I had the resources, sure, why not? But um, they didn't, you know, I think it is an older older kid trip for them to appreciate it. But sometimes you'd plan trips for you, not for your kids. Yeah. So like if you want to go and have the experience for you to remember and not your kids, then do it yeah. like hands down. So absolutely travel is worth it. Experiencing life outside your box is gigantic. Yes. So many people just sit in the same town, do the same vacation spot every year and yeah. although that's great there's so much more out well, there it, and especially and one last thing here especially around try to get around people that don't look like you yeah. think like you talk like you vote like you eat like you mm-hmm. get around uh, my you know, favorite thing is to go into a grocery store that looks nothing like my grocery yes. store at home no absolutely you know and and it's it's just so good for you to see that there's people that think differently than you do mm-hmm. that that are still living um, for the same reasons and they're good people. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's like, like we're going to, to McCarthy, Alaska for July 4th, which is going to be there during July 4th. And it's probably, I'm probably going to be around a bunch of people that think about politics differently than I do, but guess what? I can't wait because I just want, I want to be, I want to envelop myself around and this can happen in America, right? Like you don't have to go to another country in order to experience this. And also you don't have to go to another country to experience like the diversity of culture. We live in Nashville. I can mm-hmm. drive five minutes yeah. and find immigrants from other yeah. countries that are literally the entire apartment complex mm-hmm. is, it's like you're walking into another country. Mm-hmm. Like, like get out there, do it, experience it, do local places first, then start to branch out a little farther and farther. What do you think, babe? Any last words? Cheers. Cheers, guys. Um, this has been fun. Uh, hope, hope you guys always like it when Heather's on the podcast. Uh, we weren't talking deep today. You got me a little deep with the guys. 
with the with Sorry, the boyfriends. somebody asked it, not me. Oh, okay, yeah, man. Uh, but listen, this was a blast. By the time you hear this episode, we will be on a river somewhere, I think, uh, with no cell service. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoy it. And then the next week, we will be home. Uh, and we've got a surprise for you on the next podcast. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, you do know. So, Heather Whitaker, Carlos Whitaker, <laughs> coming from the Leg Life Studios in Anchorage, Alaska, yes. saying thank you guys so much for listening to the Human Get Hope Podcast. Get out there and travel. Get out there and travel. Please, please, please subscribe to the podcast. I think on Apple Podcast now it's called Follow. But do whatever you need to do on all the platforms so that you don't miss an episode. Review the podcast. That would be super helpful as well. And please, the rest of this week, make sure that you live your life and you don't let your life live you. See you guys next Thursday.